All right, we are back for another episode of the Koori Knockout Podcast. We're joined this week by Mungandai Grasshopper legend Ronald Prince. Been playing in the knockout since the age of 16 and hasn't missed many since, I don't think. I don't think you missed any, have you? Um, no, I haven't, George. Well, look, we've, we've, we've got Ronald Prince on this week. We're also joined by Tommy Tucker, Dean Witters and myself, and we're going to rip into some Koori Knockout yarns. We're going to get a little bit of a, a Mungandai angle, I think. So tell us a little bit about your, about your, about your story, where you're from, first knockout, everything that you've, that you've done. Yeah, um, well, first off, Yam Yindai, everybody. Yeah, Ronald <laughs> um, Prince, um, proud Kamilaroi man from Mungandai, um, Mungandai Grasshoppers, like George said. Um, yeah, I, I sort of grew up around knockout footy, George, like me old man, and um, got older brothers and all my first cousins, so... Um, watching footy and, and knockout footy was something that we always done, you know, part of Grasshoppers. I, you know, actually played my first knockout when I was like, you know, 14, yeah, in, in Bingra, um, which is a funny yarn because um, our, like our Mungandai side back in the day, we, we sort of had some local legends that I kind of looked up to, all my first cousins, you know, and. Um, they were all you know, sort of quick, sort of nippy fellas. Um, they how were, fast they eh? Mungandai fellas. Yeah, fast, yeah, so yeah, all the mob, you know, we, they all um, all quick fellas, all fast fellas. And that yeah. faster than you? It, it's funny. Some of them were, yeah. No, yeah I don't know about that. Life. But, um, you know, and, and some that are still, you know, coming through the grades now. But we've got, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of close family that I grew up playing with, grew up watching, and, um, you know, people that I idolised and I was – Fortunate enough to play footy with these people, you know, with um, people that I kind of um, were legends to me, you know, and, um, you know, st- they're still legends now. And they, they were the people that I didn't really idolise too many NRL players, to be honest. Um, my, my older brother and my cousins were, were you know, my idols that I, I kind of looked up to That's as well. Mad. So, um, yeah, so I played my first knockout because I was a little bit bigger when I was younger, when I was about 14. Played it at a little place called Bingra. And um, it was funny because my dad had actually said, you know, um, whatever you do, don't let Ronald go out and play with you, you know. So I jumped in with my brother-in-law, jumped in the car. And um, anyway, I, I ended up playing and, and I'm running. Um, one of my cousins, you know, made a break and he sort of passed it to me and I'm running under the goalpost and, to put the ball down. And as I was putting the ball down... Mum and Dad were coming through, you know, the back <laughs> and through the back, you know, and you can drive into the ovals at the time. So I'm here drive, you know, scoring this try under the post and, and I'm putting the ball under the post and my dad's giving me a dirty look. So <laughs> I'm putting the ball down and I ran straight off the field and went down and sat down on the on the bench after that and, you know. Put my jumper so, back on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old man gave me a little, you know. But under the ears and what are you doing, you know, playing. But um, ended up playing in that knockout and we won it, which was, you know, um, pretty good as well. So. Uh, I remember them days when, when you said you were bigger than everyone else and you was because <laughs> I played first played Ronnie when I was 14, eh? And uh, we, we yeah. ended up playing together in Group 19 side. So we'd yes. known each other. We played Northwest together. We both went to the Roosters together and won the, won the SG Ball Comp together there at the Roosters and ended up at Parramatta together as well. So we've had a, had a long connection yes. with each other. Now that Mungandai, I know how proud you are of being from Mungandai too because you used to talk yes. about it all the time. How'd they come up with the name The Grasshoppers? It, it sort of just kind of got um you know we back in the old days they used to be Mungandai Panthers and um they were kind of sponsored by um we've got a farm out there called Glanville Farm and it was Mungandai Panthers sponsored by Glanville Farm and then it kind of just sort of um windled into the Mungandai Grasshoppers and and we went from the Panthers to the Rabbitohs colours so um you know and we've stuck with it ever since but yeah it, it's funny um yeah, I don't know the, the full story on how it went from... They might have know, got into all the crops out there, what, all the grasshoppers. Yeah. they called the... I think it's the um, Corindai grasshoppers as well. Yeah. So yeah. they got all those sort of, you know, wheat and crops at the back of the back of those farms there. It could be similar. Yeah, and it's funny too because, um, you know, we're, we're pretty proud being, you know, South's colours and everybody goes for South. So when we do play at the knockouts, you know, um, we go with our, you know... Um, designs and we always decked out in flash colours and we got mobbed that, you know, when we do go to knockouts, we, you know, we always had that entertainment kind of style of footy. Um, we always had fast players where, you know, 
um, all the boys, we, we just went and played knockout footy, you know, when we did play. Um, and that was the best thing about playing with Mung and I as well because everybody in, in, in our Grasshoppers team, they're all family. So they were my brothers, you know, legit brothers. And um, the rest were my nephews and, um, you know. Um, uncles. Uncles, yeah, first cousins. So it, it wasn't about um, – we didn't really care. If we won, it was a bonus. But um, we went out and, you know, we played um, as family, you know, and that's what we've always did and, and that's how, you know, um, we ended up, you know, we just sort of went out and went, you know, you're playing next to your brother or your cousin, so of course you're going to, you know, just put everything on the line for it. So we didn't really care who we played. But what we did do is make sure that we looked after each other, um, you know, because – Something happens to him. It's not only um, you know the parents you got to deal with. It's aunties and uncles <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody else. You know, so there's an obligation to look after the young fellows. You know, so yeah. so he had he had all the he had the mob in the team, a bit like Dino and all of his crew. They got the Morans and the Widders. Yeah, he had the Princes and Ellises. Now yes. that was, I remember a few of those knockouts. Yes, you that was probably. Out of the 25, you probably racked up at least 20 out of those two names. Yeah. I don't know any other names that sort of squeeze in there, but... but um, yeah, we had the Duncans as oh, the Duncans. well. And they're, they're all our first cousins as well. So, yeah, and um, the Ellis's, they're sort of my nephews. So, you know, they're only a couple of years younger than me. So, I, I you know, we all grew up together. And they all looked the same on the field. Mm, from yeah. a distance or from the back of them, numbers didn't... You sort of had to know by the numbers who they were if you knew the team sheet. But they all moved together. They moved the same. They, you know, all had style and yes. they were pretty good footballers. The them fellas out there. Yeah, yeah. And we were, you know, we were always a little battling community. That you know, we kind of um, every year we, you know, the mob be doing raffles to break up to go to, you know, um, to the knockout. knockouts and and you know everybody pitching in and. You know, roughing it, we played, we stayed in some pretty crazy places, Reds, I'll tell you. So, you <laughs> yep. know, little um, back of people's houses, you know, families pitching <coughs> tents, now um, Nambucca knockout, we stayed at this dodgy old, you know. Um, you don't care that way, no, as long we as you didn't play. Care. Yeah, but the other good thing about it is for us, it, it was an opportunity for all of our mob to come together for, for that, you know, that weekend, the knockout weekend, which is special. And then we catch up with our mob that, you know, that were from Bree and Burke and, you know, um, you know, Walgett and then we had, you know, mob that had come down from Queensland as well to play with us. So knockouts for us was, was more around family getting together at, at a time as well and then all the little things around making sure everybody gets there. And then, you know, you know, Saturday night the boys would wander off, so, you know. But <laughs> never, it was an opportunity never. for them to get out of Mungandai for the weekend and, and we, we kind of made the best of it. Footy was a bonus, but it was the yarns that we catching up and, and catching up with mob and, and mates as well, you know, catching up with you guys, um, everybody else. And, and the young kids coming through get to see all the NRL players and um, they only see him on TV, so they get to experience that as well, so... Um, we still do it now. We, we, we still roll out and, and, and put on a good weekend for the mob as well. But being a little country town, that's our little time for mob and community to get out. and. It's like you know, a big holiday. It is a holiday. Family one. Yeah. yeah, it is. It really is. And it's, um, um, it's that connection that we, we make. And, and the old people like, you know, Dad and that, he's got old mates that – he catches up with over the weekend as well and he goes to the elders' tents and gets looked after and, you know. So. We'll be there, Sam. Well, you, you spoke about your dad there. Now, I, I played with you from young as, as a young kid and we, we went to Tweed Eds, we went to everywhere. We yes. played down in Canberra. We went, and your dad would be at every game that yeah. we went to, always driving that car. Yes. And Mob would always jump out of that car. But he, he, he just loved it. Eh? He would travel for football all the time. Coming to Sydney from Mungandai every weekend to watch you play. I remember that as a kid, like yeah, hundred percent. Best memories. Um, yeah, and you know, not to mention, you know, Dad was a fettler on the railway, so you know, dri he'd drive um, pillows into the railway for you know five days a week, and then chop in a car and you know, um, after work and come down to Sydney and you know watch us play in, on the weekends, and like um, Mum would be there, of course, you know. So they that was their thing, you know. They just supported us, you know, the whole family and um, wherever anybody played. But it, it wasn't only footy. It'd be, you know, the sisters were good at tennis. So, you know, Saturdays would be 
footy and then Sunday be, you know, they'd drive off to watch the girls play tennis or, you know, things like that. So it was always, you know, they was always on the move and we always had people that were, you know, doing sports and mum and dad were two big drivers around, you know, um, why we all got into sport and they supported us as well and left that good legacy as well. So, um, yeah, like the old fella, he just loves his footy and he loves knockout and he loves... He loves the grasshoppers, you know. He's a, a backbone for our community as well. But, um, yeah, very staunch old fella, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, he's he's just grasshoppers. He just lives for them, yeah. Well, I, I remember, like, Rod playing in the knockout over the years and I first saw you play at Burke. You were playing, like, I think you was just telling me five minutes ago it was a Dungaddy Mungandai team. Yes. Mix. And he was the centre and they just kept going to him. He's 17 years old, you know, playing in against men. There's not many, like Dino would know. And you didn't sort of play knockout back then unless you were really good. If you were a teenager, 19, 18, 19, you, you, could, you could play. But 15, 16, 17, you know, I've only seen a few of them in those yeah, times. They're a special one. They're special. You know, and, and I saw Ronnie playing in the centres and they just kept getting the ball to him. Mm. And he, he made a few breaks and scored a few tries. But the, they played wild at first game and... Walgood had a real good side. They had Wilfred and and um, oh, they just had all the local legends there. And um, he, he, nearly, he nearly got him on his own. But going, going from that, I remember always every year looking forward to watch Ron play and I'd always look out for Mungandai, just like I did with Dino. When we started, know these fellas were really good footballers, that are, you know, young gun footballers. I just couldn't wait to watch them play that next year at the knockout. So, yeah, I, I was impressed and... I watched you every year from then. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Appreciate what, it. What do you remember from from some of your old games there? Because obviously you, you played in a lot of knockouts. Who are some of the great legends that you were able to either play alongside <coughs> or play against? Yeah, um, it's funny because, um, you know, my all-time, you know, um, Panda McGrady, yeah, he's, he's actually our cousin because my nan's a McGrady as well. So um, close cousin of mine, Panda, and... Um, one of my memorable knockouts was, um, you know, when Tumala won, you know, um, cousin Jace, um, you know, God rest his soul, he passed away now. But, you know, him scoring a win and try against Larpa um, at Redfern Oval, I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, I remember because they beat us in the quarterfinal. <laughs> yeah. Wind yeah. Wind <laughs> yeah. They only beat us 18-0. Yeah. And they flogged and they won that grand final pretty good. Yeah. So, so we, I take credit out of that. There's That's so fun. many good footballers like, um, you know, Panda, Charlie McEwen. Magic, one of my all-time favourite footballers, you know, <coughs> Magic hands um, and he'd sort of, as he'd fallen down Charlie Mack, he'd kind of <laughs> pop this ball up and That's somebody would run onto it and, you know, they'd be scoring a try. So he's fallen down and, you know, popping these balls and he was just brilliant to watch. You're like landing I, I face first. Watching him. Yeah. And he, then he just got like that or and that. flick a ball, yeah. Another guy, um, another legend that I kind of love watching um, – he was uh, Audley Walker, um, North Coast. He was the same as Charlie Mack, you know, a clever player. He used to play for Tabula Rio. Um, brother Albie Torrance was always deadly around knockout time too. Mm. So you know your footy and you know, you know your communities. Um, I used to love watching Ricky back in the day, um, you know, Walgut, BAC, when, when, when they were, you know, back in the day, they, um, you know, they were crazy. Big ball, Dennis running off the back of the fence, and ah. he, he take a you know your football. To stop him. You know you knock out football yeah. when you know ball. <laughs> yeah, and you know Big Tojo and that like players like that. They were absolutely legends, you know, and and they were people that if you knew knockout and you um, travelled around and watched footy, these were the players that you know. Um, Dino's old man. Absolutely, you know, um, Armadale, you know, Gardo, like players like that, they, they were knockout players and they would not, um, it would take a truck to stop them old fellas. And I grew up, you know, watching them and then, you know, when you got to play, you knew that if you were walking out on the field, you better get ready because you're going to get lifted, you know. So you had to have that, you know, um, sort of kill or be killed mentality yeah. around when you're going and, and back then if you were going down – Somebody's ready to hit you. <laughs> he, He's taken us take back, back a generation here. Like, as I remember them days when we oh. were all first starting out that Maury knockout. Yeah. Yes. And there was Lee Uki, 
Craig Trindle, yep. like that. Matty Rose was a young fellow. We were all the same age coming through and when we all started to, to come, we, it was it was tough. You, you, you'd you be that scared to go on those fields back then. I think you yeah. shocked us there. You're playing hard, men, and yeah. I, just the names you're pulling up there, I just it sort of reminds me of that. Yep. You've got me there standing here still. But, yeah. But, but, and you touched on them McGrady's and they, I've always been fascinated by them. I grew up watching them play for the Boomerangs there in Group 19. Mm. But – that flair that they show and the way they all move together, it's its one of the best things I've ever seen on a footy field. And you were right in there amongst it because you played a few years. What was it yeah. like to play with them? Oh, it was magic. It, you sort of pick, you, you knew how to um, um, watch some people and playing with people like Panda and that. You knew how to, you know, he knew how to read a game and he knew how to run a, run a team around and he knew how to pick weaknesses out of, you know, players and that and he'd, um, you know, he'd tell you to run it, you know, you know, if he, he can see people that – it's almost like he can see things before it was yeah, going to yeah. happen. Does he say you just players. be there? Does he say to you just be there, Yeah, son? yeah, and I'll give you the ball. Like he's like hit this gap. Don't go too all early. all of a sudden the ball pops up and you're – you know, nobody's in front of you. But, yeah, and, you know, Panda was brilliant. I, you know, two of my cousins that I played with, um, Willie Duncan. Uh, not many people know about Willie, but he, he know, was – Heckle and Jekyll, Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah, Jekyll, they called Heckle and Jekyll uh, back uh, in the William day. Willie Lee, eh? Yeah, Willie and Lee good, Duncan. Man, they were good, Willie and Lee. They, they were magic too, like, um, you know, lightning quick and, and could Richard run Mackey, Richard Mackey was another yeah, one. Yeah, Richard Mackey. Some boy Peckham in that team Peckham, outside, yeah. too. They were good players. An- another guy, um, um, Matty Munro from, um, you know. Maury. Uh, Maury, brilliant player, you know. They, those, those were the kind of people that, um, and players that I kind of grew up and and played with and played against, you know. Well, when we were kids growing up, eh, so it was the group 19 sides with Mike and it was all the Maury boys, all the Armada boys, all the Tingle boys, so Blacklock, Owen Craigie and Ronnie and, and we'd all go away on these buses and, and spend time together. But there was the older fellas in group 19 at that time that we used to love, you know, yes. the Barry McGrady's, the yes. Jason McGrady was, was yep. brilliant. They had Rick McGrady Rick. was a young kid coming through. And yep. I remember brilliant. seeing him, some boy Peckham. Yeah, We mentioned Richard Mackey but Matty Munro, yeah. he was – was a slick player. Was I remember slick, watching man. him play. Can kick a ball too, couldn't he? You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, it was good, and and that's kind of where I kind of um, picked up my knockout footy. You know, um, playing, feel? playing with them guys, and and these were those kind of old school ones. They'd kind of pick you up. You know, if if you were you weren't feeling good or if you were down, they'd pick you up straight away. And so, say, if you're look, feeling tight after the second or third game, yeah. They say, come on, son. Yeah. You better, you know. You better get in there. And, and then your little mind just goes back into it. Yeah, you don't even, you know, you don't even think. You just you go f- for it. You find that energy. Because you didn't want to let anybody down. Well, how many too. teams did you play for? You, you played for Mungandai as your main team. Yeah. Uh, played with LARPA. We won a couple of knockouts with LARPA. Um, you know, very fortunate enough there. Um, what years would that have been, you reckon? Um, it was around 2002 um, or three. the years when LARPA won it. Man, um, playing with Lapa, we had a gun side like you know we had Andrew Walker, um, mm. we had um, Graham Lyon, Mudgy Lyons, um, Gab Lester played for the Bulldogs Grand yeah. Final, yeah. came back and played with us as well. Um, you know um, Timmy L- Timmy Ella, ah uh, brilliant. Um, Epe Lyons, yeah. Yeah. Epe passed away then, and, and you know. God rest his soul, but he could tackle anything. Um, Matty, we had people like Matty Rook and Matty. What was he like? Tell us about Matty Rook. Oh. He was a tough, tough defender. Yeah, I, you know, he'd be in my top three tacklers that I've ever seen tackle. You know, Matty, Matty would just sort of hit anything. Freddie Briggs was younger coming through then as well. I um, saw that Matty Rook come along. I think we saw talked about him the other week, but. He was just hitting these blokes. I'm going, where'd they get this wonder from? Yeah, and they <laughs> call him a wonder, you know. And but, I'm thinking, yeah. Shoggy, I don't want to play against him. Yeah, can they uh, can they get him out? Yeah. And he was just hitting them like, you know, like a truck. He was yeah. just hitting them Joe. Yeah, he was he was brilliant, you know. And yeah, um the the LARPA crew too, like they were all lo- local boys that I played with, and I was very fortunate enough to play with them, you know, and win those knockouts with them. We beat um I remember Saturday, um, Sunday night, we had to play Redfern and we beat Redfern and then the next day um, we had to turn around and uh, I think we played we played Little Street Dodgers in the final and I had a mouth guard in and at the end of the game, 
um, I pulled my mouth guard out and two of my teeth were still <laughs> hanging in my mouth guard, you know. So, you know, that's what it was like, you know, and the boys, you know, they didn't care. Andrew yeah. Roberts played that game? Yep, Andrew played. He, <laughs> he got me a couple of times. We but, played with Pommy at the Roosters, eh? Yes, coming through. Was he the was, young was, did yep. he duck him or did he get you? No, nah, he got me a couple of times. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> he, he, yeah. he gets everyone. He, he gets tough everyone. He was tough that way. Yeah. Oh, I remember, I remember when, we play, um, when we played Boomies there one year <laughs> and all we talked about leading up to, because I was playing front row and they were talking about Big Pom, they were saying that Andy Roberts, he can fight, he punch a cunt out of this fella, <laughs> that fella and he can hit, stay clear of him. First scrum we had, we pack it down and Trenny's in at hooker and Trenny's headbutting him. Trenny's headbutting him, picking a fight with him. And I'm saying, oh, fuck. I'm saying, Trenny, you got to do it up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying, nah, because if something happens, I'm the first one who's got to okay. jump in. Yeah. I'm right here next year. Yeah. And I was thinking, they just talked about how much, he, how many blokes he's cleaned up in the last he's you know, five few months. Way. He's tough. And I yeah. thought, I'm the first bloke that's going to have to stand up here and he's going to punch a piss out of me. <laughs> <laughs> this Trenny getting me into fights. Well, well, yeah. well Prince, even Pommy won't mind us telling us, yeah, but mm. we used to go out with him every Saturday night and he'd be in a fight every yeah. Saturday night yeah. at the Coogee Bowl. Like back our, in the days. He was like our bouncer. You know? <laughs> so he had the bouncers, probably windy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but, and Emma, his missus, and she's yeah. lovely, eh? But Emma would be in the fight too. She'd be <laughs> yeah. in there too. They wouldn't mark around them nah, too. Wouldn't they wouldn't classics. Around. But um, we had some good times in with Dino, yeah. you know, growing up. And very fortunate enough to, you know, play junior league with Dino, like you said, under, under 13s and rep games and then during school. And then me and the brother end up playing, you know, first grade together at yeah. Parramatta. So... Um, yeah, Dino's a good mate of mine, very special friend and, you know, his family, you know, mum and dad, sisters, you know, I sort of grew up with them all. But yeah. I was, there was only that one, sorry to cut in, but there was only that one little taunt thing that we're missing. Yes. So the, the one that we, we didn't knew, get to play. We got to play together, nearly tied the knot. Yeah. We what happened? We didn't get to play together. We, we, we wanted to play <laughs> knockout together and um, I was coaching Redfern at the time. First year I was ever going to skip from now and play Redfern and my brother came to play with me at Redfern that year and we, yep. and we went to the knockout together. So we went out to Dubbo, he's with us, he's got the shirt. <laughs> I can see this. And happened. everything's ready and we're getting ready for our first game. And I'm down there warming up, and I'm we're 24 players. The, the, the manager kept walking up to me, going, "There's someone Did missing." You, were you ticking them off? And I said, "I'm looking around. I'm going, who, who's not here, boys? Who's not here?" And then later out, we found out Ronnie Prince. And Ronnie, before the game, <laughs> he told me he's going over just to see the Mung and I mob to say hello. What happened, brother? Because you yeah. just disappeared. We yeah. ended up winning, winning that knockout they won too. The knockout so just too. So. <laughs> what happened? Jump ship. You yeah. did. did he wear the green short? Did he wear your shorts? He had with, our shorts with, and shirt. And when he played for there, them or did he put their gear on? <laughs> he went over to watch and say good luck to him and then he never come back. So I don't know what, what happened? happened. The old man sort of, he, he just <laughs> said straight away, you know, here's your gear. Put, um, you know, Bung and I's playing, you're not playing with Red. You say, take that fucking gear off. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, <laughs> take your gear off. Um, go and, you know, play, you got to play with the boys. And that was always my first, you know, preference. And I, I'd said to Dino, you know, um, if we get up here and the old man's up here, I, I've got no chance of playing with Redfern. And then but you knew he was going to be there. Yeah, so we, um, you know, went out and, um, yeah, I ended up playing with, um, Grasshoppers, and we got beat by Kempsey, Brian Kelly, and his team. You know, that was a deadly little game because it was two little blood lines. Or? Yeah, so um, that was a deadly little game. But yeah, well, and then I was cheering Dino on for the rest Yikes. of the weekend. <laughs> you kept him fit, Dino. I tell you what, that money. Well, I had the money there for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and Greg, you. you know, Greg um, Simpson, you know, Greg kept on messaging me, and then after the game, he's like, Prince, you know, I was like, look, sorry, Greg, the old man, you know, he just, yeah. But it's happened yes, to you a few times, it, though. It's it happened has happened to, to me a few times. It'd be hard for you not to play for Mung and I, though. Being the superstar you were coming, going into Sydney, being that, you know, that one player, that NRL blood, mm. so to speak. You know, was, it's hard for you not to go back and not play with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I was pretty lucky because I already won my couple of knockouts with Larpa, see. So, mm. you know, the, the winning of the knockout didn't bother me. You know, it wasn't about winning. I, I got my wins out of the way, so... Um, what I did do is I, I, I kind of, we, as I spoke earlier, we had a, <coughs> a, a little group of, um, you know, the lads that, um, you know, nephews and that that I grew up with and I, I made sure I, I, I grabbed these boys and we just kept taking them to knockouts, you know, over and over. So, um, you know, if, if I didn't do that, the boys wouldn't have a side, you know, or we wouldn't do any good in, in the knockout. So I just kept turning up and making sure the boys turn up and they were still playing some good footy. So, um, for Mung and I. For Mung and I. And that was more around, um, 
you know, um, I knew the important, how important it was to the family and all the families that come up to watch, you know, Mungandai play as well. And we, we'd have a rowdy little corner of Mungandai crew. Ah, but, noisy um, crowd. Noisy as hell, but that was, that was our crew and, it, and that was all our family, see. So I, I, I made sure that I, I kept our little, you know, group together, kept our little team together, kept all the family together and kept rolling out in the knockout. And like I said, we didn't really care whether or not we got beat, but... What we did do is we, we just went out and put the grasshopper jumper on and tried our best and, and that's all we did, you know. Lovely. And we play, we played for each other. Well I remember you know? I remember seniors all all the all the time coming to them knockouts and there wasn't many grounds where you didn't get you know, where you didn't get when you, you went through most rounds, first game. Like mm. He's always had that strong Family, natural, talented footy team. But they were fast. Fast. You didn't want to, that's mm. one team you didn't want to face. Always had a good 5-8, I fast, can say. Always yeah. had a good 5-8 yeah. and a fullback. Yeah. And um, if you could get those couple of forwards just to, you know, get over the edge of the other teams, you'd back line to do its work. And yeah. You could always hear that little crowd in the corner. And there might have been 50 of them, but they felt like about a 1,000, you know. Yeah. And, they, yeah. and I seen them go to the wall at knockout. Yes. And even in the recent, like probably in the last 10 years, Mung and I have probably either won it, or join in with another side, mm, you yeah. know, and I've always enjoyed it because you just turn up and they're all mob. Yeah, yeah, that's – And you're just so strong in those little knockouts. I'm thinking the good side's got to come here to try to beat these fellas because she's hard to beat when they yeah. play them in the little – because that's, mm. you know, you get to play with all your family and those little knockouts, they mean a lot to your mob, you know. Like sometimes in the big knockouts, it's hard to get everyone together. Somehow they're, they're going to get pulled into this team, pulled into that team, but – yeah, well, the ones I see, he's all get, he's all get there. Yeah, and and we do, and you know, we're thankful for Maddie George and um Trena for putting that knockout on because that's that's our little mini knockout that we get together as a family. We always pencil it in every year, mm-hmm. you know, um get onto the boys and then because we got. You know, now we've got some young guys that are playing up in Q Cup and, you know. Um, we've yeah, we've seen the players come in the wild got knock out a few of the Queensland boys. There yeah, in the so, yeah so they're not too bad either. They're, they're <laughs> so, all, so but who, they're all married into the family, you who, know. Who, who, have yeah. who have you got in the in the new batch now? We've seen some some great players come through Mungandai. Who's some guys to watch coming through G-boy. Oh, yeah, G, G, G-Boy, brilliant. You know, um, and I, I tried to get him to come and play with you guys in, you know, when you won. When you weren't going through, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I got on to and said, look, take this young fella because, you know, G-Boy's brilliant. Davey, you know, of course, stand yeah. out at Newcastle. Um, They're killing it, eh? Killing it, He was yeah. great in that trial, that Newcastle trial. He's yeah. got a big so, future out of him. Yeah, he has got a big future yeah. and he's sort of, um, you know, trying to find his um, – um, feed over there at Newcastle at the moment, but you know he's got speed to burn. Mm. Um, we got a couple of other younger nephews that are sort of floating around um, in the Queensland area. Young Gary boy, um, Shay, another nephew. They all sort of play TRL, you know. So um, yeah, we we got some um, some in laws that are sort of young Zachary. He's playing. For Falcons up there, you know, on the wing for Q Cup. That's court, a fair court. bit for a little town. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and then we've got, you know, in laws young Corey McGrady, he's our nephew. So, mm. you know, they're all, um, and, you know, these are boys that we um, we brought these boys through. They started playing knockout when they were 17. They're 21, 22 now. You know, they It feels like they've been around a few years. Yeah, yeah. so watch out when they, you know, they're, they're knockout. You know, ready. That time comes. Of, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna give it a good shake, the boys. And well, then we've got a young couple of young boys at Manly. Young Jacob plays front row. Um, he's a Mung and I boy. Um, you know, he's a Trindle as well. Um, and then his younger brother Isaac. Um, he's at Manly as well. well they got the Ford sorted now, they boys. The Ford hey, sorted. Yeah, We've been talking about yeah, the Fords. They got it sorted. This is mad, though. This is mad. <laughs> but you know that, and you touched on it. The Walgett knockout. It, it gives all those little towns out there, the Colorado, Bride, Mungandai, yep. Work, Bree, Warren, all of, everyone a chance to go back. It, it's, yeah. it's rejuvenated it mm. all out there. Eh? The, the football's but, lifting off the back of us because it's true to say, Ronnie. Back back in, our, in the days, the football was dying in all those bush areas. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's why I love the boys, you know, for putting on their little thing. Because that that gives our our little small communities out there a chance to come together, and you know we always you know we have mad games against you know Wolga, you know, Willie um, and the boys and that, um, Gadooga Mob, Yum Yum mm, and them, yeah. you know Brenton, like yeah. the boys. We, it's good you know, football out there. It's, it's Great good footy, yeah, it's tough it's football, football, but it's you? knockout footy, and it's and it's you know I don't, um, I hate to say it, but it's a lot t- tougher than you know. 
um, when you come down here and play mm. because the boys out there, they don't give a shit. They'll, they'll still throw a swing and arm at you. Yeah, yeah. You you know, they'll, get make, they'll check you. You only get penalised out there. Yeah. So the boys can slip their hands up and round the chin. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get sin bin every time you do a tackle or go in second or third meeting. Yeah. Because there's a lot of that, you know. But <laughs> that's how our, how our young boys learn how to play knockout footy. Yeah. You know, by playing at, at the World got Knockout and that, that's what teaches them, you know. Yeah. You know what I, I sort of think? Like I watch the teams and the North Coast have got like this real attractive style of playing. They, they play real good, fast, slick football and they always got skillful halves up in the North always. Coast area. Any North mm. Coast team got halves that can play in sense. You know, and Tumla are the, are, are the flashy sort of mm. quick, mm. elusive, attacking football, Brent. And then as you go for that little bit further west, you get the hard – Tough teams, you know, the, the Burks, the Breeze, the Walgots, the Gadoogas. Well, got tough. Back. They're hard they footballers tough. out there. And is that, you, you agree the same sort of style that you, what is it? Is it inbred out there or is it the way that they go? But yeah. they're always hard footballers. I think it's just the, the mentality of them out there as well. Like it's, it's a tougher mentality around, you know, that footy out there. And well, because they, they live and breed footy and, and come, come the weekends, the, the boys, when they, you know, Put the Bree jumper on and you know you're playing against Bree, you, you better get ready. I don't think they have anything else to do like as young fellas or they want to do. They play football and the grounds they play on, they're not soft. Mm. <laughs> so they're just driving each other and, um, yeah, you just got to survive. And by the time you go from 10 to 17, they say, nah, they're right, these boys. When you see them playing at the little Dubbo knockouts, Wagga knockouts, I say, look at this young Bree side. They're pretty tough, these fellas. And Charlie McHughes would say, yeah, they're right. They've been playing this football for about six years. Yeah. Don't worry. He said, no, this football, they can, he, he said to me, he goes, they can give it to them. They, they'll take anything you give it to them. He said, you know, it's just a turnaround playing it game after game. Yeah, and they don't take a backward step. No, nah, they love it. Oh. They don't. They really don't. And it's, you know, you've got to um, – you know, you got to be up ready, you know, especially in them knockouts. If, if you're playing in them knockouts, you can go and leerize around, but it's that, you know, one little slip of a, you know, if you think you're going good and then someone, you know, hits you late and then when you're down, they'll dive on you yeah. and they'll elbow it's, you, and, you know, so it's that, that get, kind of footy. They just don't get that football all year round like we do, you know, we're around it all the time. Yeah. Being up this way, but when they're the remote areas, when it comes to knockout or playing and anything they can travel out of town for, yeah. they're ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Because they got a long time. they got a long time to recover when they get back, so yeah. they just give it all. Yeah, that's so true. Well, who's your three players you wouldn't, wouldn't go to the knockout without? That you won in your team. If you're going to go to the knockout the winner, who's your three players that you want to make sure they're there? Um, don't say Panda. Nah. I, you know <laughs> – Old school or new school? Just do whatever. Do one of both. <laughs> Old school, I'd definitely take, you know, Davey, G-Boy, and I'd take Corey McGrady. The young fellas. Yeah, yeah the young lads. Um, they'd be my pick out of the, the three young lads. Um, they, they only, you know, only because I've, you know, invested yeah. time in these boys and, you know, they're brilliant. Um, old school, I'd, yeah, again, Panda, Charlie Mack, and, and I'd take, um, you know, someone like old Bull Dennis. Oh, that wouldn't, that yeah. wouldn't let what you down. I'm glad. Oh, that makes me so what proud you saying Bull. Yeah, like they, they, them old school players, man. They well, run the off Brie the Brie Warren term. Yeah. So, so tell me about Bull combo. Dennis, bro, because I've heard this name everywhere. Everyone's told me about Bull Dennis. How good! I never got to see him play, but everyone tells me that Bull Dennis. Even white fellas come to me and tell me oh, he, was, he was just rugged. Like he was tough. He was one of them fellas, like. Um, George will probably come up with a description in a minute, but I remember him. He played with Bathurst, right? And he'd only played reserve grade half the season, first grade, wing, centre, and in the knockout, he was a front rower. So he would just he would go on, put those wall that wall gear on, turn into Superman. And, yeah, turn into Superman, and he just likes the boys in Walgut. He just get that ball from the back fence and just run, and he hit the line that hard, and then he'd just keep driving through. And he wouldn't stop doing that. Every run, he would just hurt people. And I think they always described like Bull Dennis hitting them like that with his bones and just rattling blokes. Mm. And a name like Bull, you'd have to be a good player. Yeah, wouldn't you? yeah he would, it was written for his run. And I didn't not I didn't know much about his defence, but I can imagine it'd be the same. But his running was just full pelt, hard, and um, everyone sort of just looked. Yeah, when you got Bull in your team, Matt was Matt Matt. When he talks about that Gingy side he played for, Bull was the captain of that team. He got the luxury of playing with Bull in his, in his first knockout, which is a highlight for everyone. But 
you know, we we go to knock out mm. wait for bull. You know, yeah. we do those runs That's and right. smash but them. Even can you remember anyone like that? Even like even players like that too. Like it's it's pretty hard because you know you you grow up with you know we had a local legend like um Stan Ellis, so like um you know he's the Ellis mob you know um in the Fernandos a Walgut mob and Stan would he would tackle a fucking train if you let him. You That's know, bull. Like, that's the, they they were those players, you know, and, and um, you know, you, you sort of you got your local legends and you know, I'd my two old, older brother like my older brother Big Gaz, you know, he was he was up there too, my younger brother Pete, he was the five eight that you were saying, you know, with Mung and I there was always that five oh, eight. Oh yeah, Pete. That was my yeah, younger brother. Yeah. So, you know, they they were players that, you know, that we all kind of grew up playing with and playing, you know. So, um, and watching as well, so it's it's pretty hard when you kind of say three, um, three of them when yeah. you could kind of you know put some pressure on you. Eh? Uh, but I'll tell you what, week. you know, used to as well. You know, he's a fucking these fellas knockout guns. legends. He's well. here too. Trent as well. He should be you sitting know, down here, tough as nails, and wouldn't you know Trent wouldn't take good as anyone there. anybody, all of them at all. You know, uh, never bull, seen him you take know, a you backwards You know what you're step. saying is is like obviously play NRL, play whatever level your footy you want, but. To prove yourself at the knockout was what we all grew up with. As yes, mm. yeah, and we yeah. couldn't wait for it every yeah. year to try and prove yourself. Was... And crazy, you know, like um, particularly when you got young, you know, um, you're the, you, you know, the the name player out of your side, and then you've got young boys, you know, and you've got to look after the young lads too, you know. And I, I remember one year, you know, hate to bring it up, but we had a all in brawl with um, Yowie's one year, you know, and. Um, this was at um, Newcastle and the lads, like, we had all young fellas but the boys, man, you know, they didn't take us – that the brawl went on for a good, you know, <laughs> for a good while. So the boys didn't take <laughs> back wrong with that. But they, job, had pride, they had pride in their, their team there where they come from, the yeah. Guernsey, the people next to them. Well, but the guy know. next to you was your, your brother or your first cousin, so you weren't going to let anybody touch him. So yeah. the boy, you know. They are sticking up for the town. Mentioned. Yeah. That was our mentality around how we, we kind of rolled in. It's like, you know, and people go and play for different communities and you don't really know. You get that feeling, you know. You know the drill. These you know, fellas do it too. You don't like. know if somebody's going to back you up on the yeah, field, yeah, you know, but yeah. when you're playing with mob <laughs> you know, and family, you knew the person next to you has got your back and, and the other 13 that's behind you, plus the other seven that are sitting on the bench, plus – that there's another hundred people in the what crowd over there. Reckon mum, you don't want to face too. mum and auntie later. Is that the toughest? The aunties are later. Yeah. They don't look after their. I reckon boys. them aunties in the the supportive group. They could give you a flog and while they still holding the kid. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. How many times well, have you seen them singing? The they got the kid and just in a nappy. Yeah. And the old one. <laughs> you hit my nephew one more time, boy. I'm going to lift you. Yeah. That's a nice face, ain't it? Yeah. And <laughs> out like out out. Like even now our supporters, our women, are, you know, they're the rowdy ones and, you know, they're the ones that sing out and cooey out and they actually wait for somebody to say something back. Do they still say so they can get <laughs> can back I, into them, you I, know? Can I, can I, I ask you this care. one? one? Do they, they, still, do they still ask? Do they still say, come on, put him on there. He's been sitting on the bench for half an hour. <laughs> yes. Like, yep. you know, they still run the side, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, um, yeah, it's funny but, um, you know, knockout footy is – you know, it's it's the best footy for me. You know, growing up and and playing, you know, playing NRL and and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Did I you waited, look forward to it? I you? waited till knockout time came around yeah. just to yeah. just to represent my community, yeah, my 100%. family, my mob. You know, and that that was the highlight of you know my my footy career. It was waiting till knockout come along so that um, you know. We can put our own little little side in lazy little country town, but we we you know we knew that it was all family, and that's why we went to the knockout. And we, on the other side of it, is that um, you know we got to you know our shirts and that we give them the family members, you know the mob that we don't see for the whole year. You mm-hmm. give all your gear to them, you know. That Footy you shorts too. Shorts and all, you oh, know. Geez. So we that's that was the other part of the knockout that we, we kinda did. You know, we went there on oily rag and the <laughs> stuff that we you know we had we we still give, give it, it away. away. Still give uh-huh. it away. And that's what it Start was. Start again next doing. year. Start all over again with nothing. Budgery. You know, nothing in it's but you know. Next but he's right, yeah, again. because you just keep going winning them Walgut knockouts yeah, to the late grand. Right <laughs> that's a good little kickstart every year, turn yeah. up. 
Turned up yeah. with 15 princes, 10 bloody <laughs> Ellis's. Uh, 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 <laughs> we have a couple of Toowoomba yeah. players. Yeah. They're your mob. Yeah, so um, a lot. But what we do do is like the boys that we do bring in, they're all, you know, married into the mob. So we still do the same now. Um, and every now and then we'll kind of pull a player from here and there. I like how he's bring Corey Cox in every year. Yeah, he, play, he's he plays hard for your team, man. He's a deadly footballer. Yeah, and he's, he's married to, you know, our cousin, niece, you know, so... He's married into the mob as well. It's like he comes from Mungandai, the way he plays. Well, he's... Plays with art, yeah. Yeah, he's Mrs. He's, dad, Nigel um, Brown. He was he passed away now, but he was one of the legends, you know, legend fullback for Mungandai as oh, well. So he hasn't so. got the blood there? Yeah. Oh, that's mad. So, you know... Um, I love watching him play. He's Mrs. I try to get him with the boys. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why that's how we get Corey, you know, through um, his Mrs. Montana, you know, married into the, into the mob and... And his dad, uh, Montana's dad, you know, was a local legend now. You well. let me poach him, or you let me poach Corey, or what? <laughs> don't go poaching on us. You let the whole family look. You have the women and yeah, all. Yeah, after women and all. Taste He's my cousin, though. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Now, but, Ronald, you, you've you've played in a in a heap of heap of knockout games over the years. What's some of your most memorable games, or what's some of the craziest stuff you've seen in a knockout game? Um, most memorable probably was um, it was. Probably up there when we blew straight dodges. When I was telling you about the mouth guard incident, that was that was pretty out there. But um, where are those teeth? A couple of you know, there was one year when we had to play. You know, we had to play a game before we got into the knockout. Wait there, don't do that one yet. Save that for me. So you want it now? Yeah, I want it. That was crazy. Will you tell us your version of that one then? Tux the, blast from the past. Tux what blast do you got? from the past. Out of all the years I've been going to the knockout, we've always looked at the draw. First thing you do is look at the draw. Yeah, how many teams? Mm. We get to this Raymond Terrace one and there's like teams below the bloody line. There's about four teams down there, down to about 68. I thought, how the hell are they going to get these fellas in the knockout? And I saw Mungandai down there. And anyway, I was looking at them. Well, yeah, Mungandai, I'll probably win a couple of these games anyway. But is it true that when you are on that 67th or 8th spot there that he's played the first game mm. to get into the knockout? To get in. But yeah. then he didn't have a play signed up on the sheet and he's had to play that game again? Yep. So, so these fellas played two games two just to games. get into the knockout. Yeah. And then when they got into the knockout, they won two more games. Is that yeah. true? Yep. And the oh. player. <laughs> wow, we had like four games four in one. Four games in like two days. And the player um, was my older brother Gary and he came in and he signed it and then he, and he pissed off and then he come back and then it was like, Gaz, and um, it scribbled his name out because his name was already on the sheet too. So, um, and we didn't even have 25 players. That's what know? I heard, yeah. And so <laughs> they're playing it up. Play. So you're playing to get into the knockout. But you mucked up the team sheet, played the played game, won game. that easy, then, then had to play it again. Lucky he's got to even play it again, I guess, yeah. with the protest. You know, yep. fellas like, they'll just like, I don't want to play no more games. And then yeah. that was just to get into it. Just to get into it. Mm. Two games to get into it. <sighs> yeah. So, um, like four games, you're buggered after well, four games. At least you still got four games in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, yeah. weekend. Yeah. And, and you still get to go to the after party on Saturday <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, the same day. <laughs> That's all right. But it was, you know... Um, yeah, we, we didn't mind, um, honestly. And um, if we had to play a game to get into the knockout, that's what we did and that's how we looked at it as well. So we was like, that's what we got to do. Let's, you know, let's give it a crack. Must, you must have had a good team that year, though, to keep winning them games because people run out of puff. It doesn't matter how good yeah, your team is. Yeah. If you're playing three and four games like that in two days, mm. that's sort of unheard of, you know. Um, you must have had a good side. We Again, we only had our, all our local boys. All our local mob and they, they were all just all playing, playing local Talent. footy. Yeah, that's all it was, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, nah, we um, – crazy. That, that would probably be up there with some of the crazy kind of – Who were those guns. teams you might have been? Um, to be honest, I, um, we had to play a, a Tumala team. That's the one we played twice and, and a lot of our team no members were in the Tumala. No wonder they want to play us again. And, and and surely one bloke played with your team and then swapped over half time yeah, and went yeah. to that side. <laughs> and we had a couple of, um, you know, a couple of Mungandai boys playing that other side and he, he, every time he got run, ran the ball, he got lifted, you know, we made sure, you know, if he runs it, if he gets down, <laughs> the boys, he's better, you know. I think so. you were telling me about this, yeah. Was it, was it fiery? Yes, it was a fiery little game but yeah no nah, it was um did you wear your mouth guard that game always always warm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so you didn't you don't play a knockout you don't play a knockout without a mouth guard no. no no way yeah 
What, what's that? Mouth guard and knockout. Oh, no, I did. But it cop- copped a lot of eye shots around mm. it. Remember your head would always be scarred up. Yeah. I've yeah. seen you with a couple of bands around yeah, your forehead. You always have the head scarred up. But, uh, yeah, they, they don't miss you, the boys, when they go for you. One of my memorable knockouts too is um, a couple, you know, when Dino in and one of that, you know. Um, Kingscliff? Kingscliff, that, that, was, that was a special knockout. And I was even, Definitely. you know, um, I was running the waterfall upper at the time when Dino in and was, you know, um, and the way the boys won it there, that was, that was that unreal. Was, that was mm. unreal and that'll stick with me for a long time. Yeah. Watching you win your first knockout too, you know, because mm. – you form them, you have them close connections and when, when you sort of get put out, you follow a team, you yeah, know, your, your yeah. BAC, you, you know, WACs and, and your Narmans because Dino's there. Your bush sites. You follow the Tinger bush and that. Yeah. They had good campaigns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, LARPA, I still got a close connection to LARPA. My kids, you know, um, play play with LARPA and, um, you know, one, two knockouts there and, and I, I still go and help out out there when I can as well. So... Um, you know, that's that's my home away from home out LARPA as well. So, um, yeah, so I, I still follow LARPA as well. So, um, but yeah, I just love footy. You know, I love knockout footy. I love the yarns. I, I know my history around the knockout footy as you well. Know, and Bull I, Dennis, you I, know I, knockout. I, I grew up watching knockout and, <coughs> um, you know, got lifted a plenty of times <laughs> in the knockout, you know, so. Tell me all the positions you would have played at knockout. Did, I, I know you was a centre, but what? I started off on the wing, and then I sort of went to fullback, and then um, as you get, you know, and then you know, I was playing on on the wing fullback for Para, and then go back and play in the second row lock for <laughs> yeah. Mungo. Because you're the muscly you know? cousin. You're the, yeah. you're the big you muscly done cousin. All year, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you you did them things, you know, packing in the front row. I I didn't really give a shit. I yeah. just you know just went out there and played for the mob. You know, whatever position it was. And you was you a know? ball runner anyway. So and then it was you. it was you know you're the goal kicker. You yeah. take <laughs> that, you know, yeah, kick off. Nah, captain but, sponsor. Yeah, captain yeah, and the ball. Sponsor. But, yeah, no, that's how bad it was. Like there was a couple of years where I, I literally, um, you know, pulled money out of my own pocket, bought the jumpers, the shorts and socks for all the boys and made sure that they got up there and, um, you know, that's what you do and, and that's what I did for, you know, for the mob out home as well. So You um, give and, everyone a chance. Yeah, and all me, you know, my family still talks about it, but, it, you know, that's what I did for, them, you know, for, for my community, for my people, you know, I – Made sure that um, – because I knew how special it was, again, to, to the mob, you know, getting there. And I, I made sure that, you know – there was even one year, Dino, remember when um, all our – when I was playing at Para, you know, they used to – we had ASICs and we'd walk into ASICs, the, the shop. With Rob, Rob, Rob ASICs with, to yeah. take it back to the community. <laughs> yeah, just take it back to the community. <laughs> so I'm grabbing all these boxes, you know, and chucking them in my car and all mine and I was running out with all these flash ASICs. <laughs> You know, and like that's what we, that's football, what we did. We'd steal the footballs, the yeah. strapping, we'd take it all strapping before they yeah. from Parham and we'd take it back and next yeah. time and I and no one got strapping because yeah. we brought right in the cupboards at yeah. the Parham. Yeah, that's what we did. But yeah, no, I, I um don't regret any of it and it was more around helping the mob and yeah. We did it for good reason. There was nobody you can't wear that many, that much gear on your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll um He's like, Ronald, you're back for another pair of boots. So he's like, take these ones while you're at it, you know. Did you put on Dino's <laughs> bill? <laughs> well, they had a warehouse, see, yeah, so we could just, hey, Dino. I had a yeah. warehouse, bro. I remember and I broke we could the just walk in and, and, you know, take what you want, how many Did pairs you, you want. Train, we had, you know, um, training, we had three pairs of training boots and then you had two pairs for the weekend. Para Rich Club too. I, I only wore one pair of footy boots and kept the rest for the boys, you yeah, know. Mate. That's, that's all I did. Up, I tell you. Did you ever yeah. get a set of Guernseys for the Nau and Eels off the Parramatta well, That was the best thing for me was Parramatta was the Eels and Nau and Eels, so I'd be able to send everything back home, you know. Did you, get a, did you ever get a kit, though, from Parramatta? No, nah, like, we would take a lot of the, the training gear. The training gear would well, always get mm. back there. Oh, that's mad. Yeah. Some of the old stuff, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was still new for all of us bushies, eh? All that stuff used to get back there. And they appreciate all that stuff, the, yeah. the country clubs. They're probably they still wearing much. that gear. Some of them will be. Yeah. And I, I'm i a bit of a jumper collector, so I've got all my old, you know, for my first knockout jumper with the grasshoppers, you know, when my first ever knockout up until my last one, um, you know, so I'm very proud of that. And I, it's something that I'll leave for my kids as well. I've um, got my NRL jumpers, That's you know. Exciting. When we won the yeah, World Sevens, yeah. got that jumper as well. With Dino. Never right. Yeah. So, you know. Um, um, Who else was in that team? When. The World Sevens team. Um, well, 
We had um, Jamie Lyons, Violecki, um, Highmast, Dino killed it that year. Well, Dino. Wits. Um, Dino was, um, you, I hurt my ankle, then Dino come in, eh, yeah. Dino? I wasn't supposed to play. He yeah. Wouldn't let, he wouldn't let me play because I wanted to play for the Indigenous team too. Yes. I remember we trained against them, mate. Yeah. And then he, Brian wouldn't let me play with them. And yeah. I was, I was, so I refused to play with Parra. And <laughs> next minute, but this fella got hurt then. And then I had to come in last minute to come and play, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So what, um, you sub in, what, from Saturday to Sunday or something, did you? Yeah. But, um, yeah, and them Indigenous, like I played in the World Indigenous Sevens, you know, and we, yeah. we, we kind of had to go through this eliminate. We won the comp, but we had to go out and play against Tonga and Samoa and all that out at Blacktown and then. Yeah, yeah, um, Samaris, wasn't yeah, it? Samaris. Yeah, Samaris. I remember watching that. Carl like Webber, is that Carl yeah, Webber? Yeah. PJ and. and PJ, um, Robbie John, Robbie John, another <laughs> knockout. Was that when PJ him. knocked that bloke out off the tap, off the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, against Fiji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was all swarming in my yeah. on him. He could hit PJ. He's, he's we one player. At the, at yeah. the Roosters, PJ. Yeah, it was too. He's probably another player I, I wouldn't leave in, out of my knockout team, PJ Ellis. Ah, oh, mate, he could – he would hit you and hurt you, but he was that – he'd pick you up, you know. I, yeah, I played against did. him one year and – um. Took a run off and we played Tinga at Nambucca and I ran into PJ and my <laughs> head rocked back he and it. he jammed me, you know, but he, he, you know, picked me straight up after it and made sure I was all right. But, you know, I, I'd pick PJ Ellis as, you know. Yeah, that's um, one fellow I always stay fella. clear off. Yeah. You, run at run. you, you wouldn't run at him. You don't run straight you know. PJ Ellis. We learnt that early at the Roosters. Yeah. Though, yeah. Up, up in Group 19. Yeah, no, Group 19. 19 we I played, played against, against him in the camera knockout there. I ran around him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he mate, technique-wise, yeah. crazy. Like he just knew how to hit you. He was Subtle. another one of those guys. Subtle hitter. Yeah, but jam you, you know. Like so him. crazy. Deadly fella and very humble, you know. Mm. Um, the way he talking real slow, <laughs> ain't what, you know, like he's one of them fellas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, you're going to kill you for he's talking gonna about He's going to kill me. <laughs> but he, the brother boy like PJ, he was uh, unbelievable. So he should have went, you know, he should have went further than what he did and, um, you know, he's one of those players. There's so many of them out there and, and I was only talking about that brother Pity, you know. Jace, Jace Pitt, Pitt yeah. another another deadly player that should have, you know, you know, Jace and, is unique. And went on, yeah. and you know, there's so many stories around, you know, players, Aboriginal players in in different communities that that kind of had the talent, but you know, didn't kind of go on with it or didn't want to pursue it or were content in being that kind of local kind of legend that people look up to when. Really, they could have kind of went on and, and did a lot more. And, and knockout is the time where you see those players shine, you know. So, um, and and they do it against the NRL players because you know they know they've got the talent, and and that's their showcase again when the knockout comes on around how, we how they can showcase their skills and how skillful they are without even training, you know. So, um, imagine if <laughs> without players, training, yeah, if they got into training and you know did all that. Like we know so many people um, that are like that as well. Um, you know, people that can kick a ball for days. Footy from Armadale. Yeah, he can Mate, run. you should. Gary Davison. Gary Davo. Mate, he can he, 60 metres. It'd be nothing for him to kick a goal. I've, I've never, the only other person I've seen kick a goal like that would have been Andrew Walker. Mm. You know, and Gary Davo, mate, he could, he put a ball over from anywhere, that fella. So, you know, it's, it's those kind of yarns as well that you kind of, um, you know, everybody knows. And I was pretty fortunate because. Um, growing up, I, I, you know, spent a lot of time over in, in Lismore going to school as well. And I remember the Laurie brothers oh. that used to play for Grafton. Sean Laurie could play. Mark Laurie, yeah. Um, and these were, um, they were um, two brothers and I used to love going and watch them on the weekends, you know, and still remember them. They were like, um, you know, legends up in that North Coasty kind of area. Mm. Yeah, on top of watching Audley play, you know. Mm. Um, so um, I used to... <clears throat> you know, I used to watch footy, you know, that's how I got into footy and that's how I sort of, you know, um, knew that this is something that I wanted to do, yeah. Well, Mungandai Grasshoppers is known for fast players, absolute fast players. You talked about a lot of great players that you played with and against. Who's the fastest you reckon you've seen in your time, either oh. by experience or just watching them? Who's the fastest you've seen on the field? Back home? It it, it's it's anywhere. Prob it's probably a tricky one because um, there's a couple that spring to mind, and and you know, 
G Boy, Davey, you know, they're the younger guys coming through. But um, probably in my time, um, my cousin Willie Duncan, and um, he was up, he, he back in the days too, like um, they had the sprints up in Toowoomba at the Toowoomba knockout. They used yeah. to have the sprints. Dale Shearer, you know. Back in the day, he's playing for Australia. My cousin Willie beat him in a hundred meter. Yeah, Shearer could run. Yeah. Shearer could, could run. run. He was fast. This is when he was playing for Australia, you know. And um, cousin Willie, yeah, um, tailed him up and and you know, That's won the money and got everybody peed <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> you know? Maggie, but, yeah, I tried to go yeah, from the lock out with a profit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Willie was quick. He was, he was lightning, and he. You know, when he ran, it didn't look, even look like he was running. That's how freaky yeah, he was. How much know. did he win? But he, I, I think he won like 500 bucks. Oh, gee, that had been a good charge on the way home. So I was, I was only little, but um, I still remember. We used to, Willie, you know, he was that good. We used to travel for Mungandai and he used to play in the, um, you know, Dolby kind of area. And, you know, the whole Mungandai crew would go up to Dolby to watch him and cousin Paulie and, and then play, you know, up there as well. So, um, yeah, he, he'd be up there for sure. Oh. But they, they were just um, outside of our little community. No one kind of knew them or recognised them, but they were, you know, they were legends to fast us. Play. Yeah. You, you played with all them young – I remember when you are playing with the Maury Balls and you had some fast players, Dave Green. Dave and Green and Steve Raveno, Craig Steve McKenzie. Brew, yeah, Craig McKenzie. Who's the fastest out of them Maury crew? Because they could all run They could time. run, yeah. Well, Willie Emmon was fast back yes, then too. And Dave Green was up there. Like um, he was pretty, pretty lightning and quick. Um, you know, back in the day, and I reckon Craig McKenzie Craig, was the fastest I've seen on the. Craig the could motor, yeah, and, and score tries, he's and scored he tries from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, um, growing up playing against them, you know, fast players as well, and we played against Macca coming through. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, he was like brilliant. We brilliant. used to, you know, under Group 19, we all, you know, they had Presto and PJ. You, and you, Macca you think and about this, and Group 19 will never have this again. But you had Ronnie Prince, you had Craig McKenzie, Alfie Duncan out there yes. at Moree. Um, Willie Emmon was a gun player. The Tinga boys had Preston, PJ, Owen, Nathan right. Blacklock all coming through. Timmy Campbell was a yes, gun too and we Timmy. played reps with Timmy. Yes. And then in Armdale you had, you know, Brian Quinlan, Dennis Moran, uh, yes. Mal McGuinness, like all these, Terry Foote, Gary Davis. Yeah. Like, all these gun players, all blackfellas playing for Group 19 and Northern mm. Division back in the days. And we all grew up together. Yeah. We used to just love playing against each other yeah. all, all the time. And, you know, going over to Armdale was always Freezing, and you know, you wait for the boy, and the boys will be there laughing at us. Cause water in the cold, field and you know? water in the shed, so they'd be freezing. Yeah, even more, more. Yeah. Big advantage, eh? Yeah. But Quino, man, it was an Brian evil Quinn, player. He was Brian brilliant. Quinlan, yeah. brilliant always, player. I always say, like, because like, me and Dennis obviously come through, but I reckon Brian Quinlan probably the most brilliant player that I've yeah. played with at night. had all yeah. the skills in the world, Quino. Dennis, you know, he's one of my favourite players, um, knockout players. Wes? He, yeah, Wesy, yeah. Um, you know, players like that who you grew up playing against and you admire, you know, how mm. good they were because, you, you you know, you grew up watching them and watching them play and you, these are players you wanted to play against because they brought out the best in you as well. I think when you get some of them players who are great players, you, you also they've got a bit of crazy in them as well. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got a bit of wildness yeah. so you know they're going to last the, the knockout out. Yeah. Because they don't like losing to anyone. Yeah. They'll just – Keep going, and they don't like the other person being better. Yeah, and they bring you know? the boys along. These with fellas even well. like it when they cross the line. Yeah, they didn't like anyone beating them. Yeah, and, and George just kept going. This fella over here, Trenny, he was a machine. Yeah, and the big fella, you and Dino's the same. You kind of knew when you got wild because <laughs> they'd let everyone know. You know, and, you know, once oh fuck, George is getting wild here. You know, you better watch out. You know, <laughs> we did someone's know. upset him. Yeah, someone's, that, upset, someone's him. upset Big George, and whoever's playing against him, you got to watch out. Dino was the same. You know. And, you know, Trent, like when George goes off, Trent and Maddie goes nuts. So, you know, Dennis, when Dennis goes nuts, he'll growl at Dino and the rest of the boys. And then, you know, that's what picks That's the what boys reminds up. us of tough knockout stuff. Like, we win those games, we see fellas going off their heads. They come back and win the game, then they go, okay, boys. Yeah. <laughs> what do they say next time? Now we're not going to carry on like that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enough of that. <laughs> Enough of that. that. We're going to go out. Yeah, we just got to yeah, play good football play and win. Play yeah. Yeah. Next minute, someone gets lumbered again and she's all on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Repeat. Yeah, yeah. And that could cost you the game. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a funny thing because it happens in heaps of circles where it's now discipline, boys, discipline out here. But if one fella gets in, we all, if they hit one of us, they fight all of us. Did you have anyone in your team besides the boys I've already talked about? George wasn't that wild. Trenny, he's fire band. Matt, he didn't like anyone beating him, even if it was a grasshopper running past him. He wanted to kill him. He was pretty fiery. Is there anyone in your side? Alan McKenzie. Alan McKenzie every time. Uh, Al, they call him Bundy, Al Bundy, because he, he's crazy. But he was always the one who – the time bomb that would explode, the going off his head. We'd be winning a game 20 to 4, the opposition sort of giving up. He'd go out there and start trying to fight. So <laughs> was like, Mate, God, it's all over. But he just had that competitive streak and he's always the one behind the aggression in an Arwen team. When he comes on the field, he brings the mongrel. So he could bring the game and just change slaughter the game. teams. Change the game. Always mm. off the bench. Mm. But if you seem to be on there when the game is 14, 16, you're thinking, do you keep him on? Or do you keep him off? Well, he'd never give penalties and stuff away. He but was just the fire, the mouth, the angry, and he'd just get everyone going. Did you have so. anyone on your side you didn't know whether you keep on or keep off? We uh, – Well, they were more – I, I was more the growly one and I used to growl at them. Ah. Yeah, but um, we never really had that kind of... Aggressive type of nature? Yeah, no, nah, we, we kind of um, played within ourselves. But if something happened, like, the boys were ready to jump, you know what I mean? But we never really went out to... We never had any cheeky fellas that would kind of... We, we If anybody got cheeky against the boys, they knew, like, they knew that... Something's going to happen. So, um, yeah, now we, I was mainly the fiery one that would kind of get stuck into everybody. But, yeah, we never, yeah. Good but, when, you know, when we go to places, they say, oh, my God, they're cheeky fellas and this stuff, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we're like, well. We're You've just... been pretty happy that Maureen Tumala was probably your next door neighbours. Yeah. Like, it took a bit of heat off you, Maureen. Yes. Because they were they're, fiery. They're all our mob too, see. So we're, we're related into all the Maureen oh, mob. And our, our nan and pop, you know, my dad's, he's from Tumala as well, so. Um, you know, we, we got close family ties a, around that area as well. So we basically we grew up playing against them. You know, um, who's going, the side you love to beat? Mung and I. Who's the who's the side you love to beat? We, oh, uh, we sort of. It, it, it was funny because we we'd always wanted to play because um, back when we were younger, the rings was the side. You know, and everybody kind of. Um, you know, everybody wanted to play the rings and beat the rings and that. But you that know, history. Yeah, it it was kind of the big brother to us as mm. well. You know, and and Tumla because Tumla was you know we're close with all the Tumla mob, so we had no issues around um, wanting to beat Tumla because you know that was our mob. But it was sort of the you know we wanted to play more yeah. or Next you know, just a little bit further down the bro, road. Yeah. But bro, in the in the nineties, eh? Everyone wanted to play the boomerangs, eh? Yeah. Everyone. When you in the late eighties, nineties, yeah. mm. every single person wanted to play the boomies because they had the best crowd, they yeah. had the great yeah. sides. Yeah. The hype was all about them, and you yeah. couldn't wait to play them. Right? They just yeah. threw the ball around. Even in Group Four, they were dominant. They mm. were dominant through Group Four then, around that same era. But their crowd, because yes. you got that crowd, even though they're against you. That's, that's what you want. I'm pretty yeah. sure they, you, you see them warm up at the knockout and they still have about 200 people yeah. watching mm. them. It used to be, you know? I've never seen hype like it back, at, like back in them days. I've not seen a team have the same hype from day one, game one. They yeah. had the vibe. Like everyone yeah. picks the vibe up as it goes, but they had it going from game one. You just, yeah. just love watching them. Did you used to yes. go and look at the team when they warmed up, see who they had in their side or, or you always had a bit inside goss? Right. Well, we we were known, bro. We wanted to kill them. We always wanted. To, it's it's the biggest rivalry. I, like I said to you before on here, we got raised as young kids not to ever lose to Maury because mm. half our cousins live over there, and we'd always cop it from them and that. But it's like a local derby. It's, bro, it's one of the biggest rivalries. Like it's mad, for me, though, still, eh? and for me still, it's the be- best game that I will ever want to play in is Nowen versus. Can Maury. you polish that knee up and come back nah, and just to play against nah, them one more time? No, nah, nah, I'm not that or silly you, now. Or you just going to? Speaking of that, what do we what do we got from you this year? You you you're back on the field this year? No, brother. I'm um, you know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> not a lie, mate. That, he told, he told the truth all day <laughs> yeah. until now. You're going to lie now. You're going to lie. I, now. I have got um you know I've got my young fella. You know he's 17 and and he's turning 18 and um there's a little knockout in Collie yeah. coming up so. Um, Dad's going to strap the boots on with him and I'm um, really looking forward to that because it's going to be his first ever knockout um, with Mung and I and, and it's, you know, it's instilling those kind of um, pride that you have in, in the jumper and, 
he's grow, growing up watching, you know, watching me play and watching me go ape shit and, you know, everything that comes with playing in knockouts, losing knockouts, you know, crying after you lose, knowing you're going to lose but you're still, you know, but those kind of things like um, – and it's um, – I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because it's going to be his chance to have a crack with the boys. Um, you know, we've got some older boys that are playing as well and, and some of the younger boys that are coming through. So it's that generational thing. So – and I've already put the boys on notice, said, look, I used to look after you, you know, when you and you were younger, so the young look fellas coming through. Boy, yeah, look you. after my boy. And all you mob that are playing out there, well, go for well, my okay. little Collie, Collie run a great knockout, so yes. it'll be a good one, and I reckon it'll be a great warm-up for you then back up in, in October. What's the date? What's the date for that I one? I think it's June long weekend. Yeah, well, I, and I might get out there. The Collie mob are doing it, you know, um, uh, uh, this is their, uh, probably their third year, but they're doing a really good job out there. And, yeah. and again, it's another little uh, a knockout for the young, you know, um, the smaller towns out there to get together, you know, to come and play, you yeah. know, knockout footy for their mob, you know. Um, you guys should get behind it and take the yeah, podcast yeah. up and NRL yeah, cool. should be getting behind it because these, these are grassroots footy and these are um, small communities that – People forget about, yep. you know, particularly um, your mung and dies, your collies, you know, your gadugas, you know. So these little towns are, 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 are little towns that thrive on 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 footy, knockout footy, rugby league, and um, they um, this is penciled into the calendar for the mob, you know, collie knockout, um, Walgett knockout, and then the big knockout. But you know, we go to the Toowoomba knockout, we go to Roma knockout. So our little community. Durham Bandy knockout. We have about six Durham, or seven Durham knockouts. Durham Randy. That's that's about <laughs> like we got about seven knockouts before we before we play in the big one as well. So that's I reckon that's the best part of it. It's, it's like knockout season hits, doesn't it? Yeah, At the end of the yeah. year. And I feel a, like the knockout finishes somewhere. He's <laughs> the next minute you go to Durham Brandy, St George, yeah. and all the little ones. I'm thinking, far out. These fellas must be sick of playing football. But the, but if one is close though, eh? mate. Yeah, and the St George one, like you play Sherbergs and them, like there, there's some really good teams that get out there. The Toowoomba teams, the Sherberg teams, like. There, there's some really good footy over that way. So we, we're lucky we get to play both ends, sides of the border and we yeah. go to Toowoomba and then you're playing all the Toowoomba teams and um, Brisbane natives come over. Yeah, so you, yeah. you're playing against them as well. So, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky. And, and our little community, we sort of we, – we go to these little knockouts just to, um, you know, build the confidence up from the boys that's and, and train, get them man. knockout fit and knockout ready too. That's, that's So come big knockout. The boys have already had six or seven knockouts under their belts. In one year. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling you this. <laughs> let my secret tell. How many teams do you take to um, Collie? Because I know you take two to Walgut. Yeah, we, we, um, we only take – we've taken the men's and women's. Um, it's been pretty tricky with the um, – um, you know, when the memorial team stuff comes up, that's pretty tricky because the mob, they, they want to put the grasshopper jumper on, but then, you know, the memorial teams come in and then – yeah, you know, you're we're stuck family, between. we all come together and it doesn't matter yeah. whose memorial team it is, we just come together and play under, you know, uh, under a memorial a team. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's crazy, but, you know, that's, um, yeah, it's still, it's memorial teams, but they're still branded under grasshoppers as well. No, well, every time you turn up, you always always put on a good show. Love watching the grasshoppers play, and we could keep talking to you all day here. You've had some great yarns to share, some great old yarns, especially from out west. Um, really glad that you come on the Knockout Podcast, and we'll probably have a, have, have a few more yarns to, to milk out of you over the next – Next, uh, he's definitely a 79 breed, eh? Dean, Dino. Yeah, we all, uh, he knows it all. Old school. I I thought me and Dino knew a bit about Nokia, but yeah, you got us. But it's (laughs) like I said, like, um, knockout footy, you gotta know, you you know, um, you gotta be around it and know your people, you know, know your people, know your community, and um, it's not only that, it's knowing your local legends from that community as well and recognising them old, old, old school players, you know, that, the legends that are in each community as well. And, um, you know, myself, um, I go up and still say good day to those people. Got That's it. just the type of person I you am. still get excited I, to see them, though, still, too, don't Yeah, you? and even though they're older than me and whatever, like I, I go out of my way to go and, you know, um, recognize, not only recognise them but... Um, thank them for, you know, um, me personally growing up, you know, watching them, watching them play because it was, you know, it's a privilege and that's what taught me, that's you know, my, my footy as well. 
So, um, yeah, and it's all the, you know, we need to get our younger generation around recognising all our, uh, you know, the old school. And this is the beauty about this podcast is you're bringing up them names of the, the old school legends, you know. That's you, particularly yeah, that's in. Particularly George. in, you know, different communities, yeah. you know, recognising people from, you know, our, our communities back home um, here, you know, and, and in, um, you know, in the rural settings as well. Um, and, you know, bringing those names back to life as well. So recognising them and, and then um, not only recognising but acknowledging you know, the, the hard yards that they kind of did yeah, as 100%. well. Well said. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, I agree, and and I know that when you when you leave here, you're going to think of a whole heap more yarns that you that you remembered that you didn't tell yet. So we'll get you back on again at some stage to, to share them with us again. But um, keep following us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Check out the podcast, Spotify, Apple. Can I just say one thing? Um, I just want to send a shout out to my sister, um, um, my older sister Paula. That's kind of. Um, you know, battling um, up in Brisbane Hospital at the moment, um, you know, going through some tough family stuff, um, thinking of your sis, love you. Um, hopefully, um, you know, get better soon. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Thanks, yeah, brother. Bro. Mate. Don't Appreciate forget it. about Tuck's bars from the past. Don't forget about Tuck. And thank you very much for tuning in. Catch you next week.